Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, five minutes after nine o'clock. It's time for Veterans News. Hank Whittier is in the studio. Good morning, Hank. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Glad you're tuning in this morning. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, we uh, we always start off. By the way, we're missing somebody. What happened to Phelan? Uh, Phelan oh, is yeah, uh, well, occupied okay. elsewhere right. right at the moment. Right, good. Okay. We, you know, I know we had a casualty on our hands or something. <laughs> Not yet. No, no. All we right. had a church thing. Yeah, we do have casualties, unfortunately. So uh, I know you got Brian. Is it Brian on the phone this morning? Okay. Yes, hey, Brian. Brian. Good morning. Good morning. No, Brian, is he talking? Yes, to me? you got to have your head. Yeah, you got to have him on. Got to last weekend, huh? Brian, you're forcing me to wear my headset. I, I really don't like doing that. But. <laughs> Because I look better without it. Can you it, hear me actually. now? Yeah. I, unfortunately, Brian, I can't hear you. Yeah. Hey, Brian, you got casualties? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I have one for today. Okay. Go ahead, Blaine, Brian. Blaine Wildenauer is a firefighter age 58 with 40 years of service, died on November the 2nd. He was with the Fox Township Volunteer Fire Department located in Kersey, Pennsylvania, and he died in an apparent heart attack while working the scene of an auto crash. To date, he becomes the 88th firefighter to die in the line of duty. I bet, what, about 60% of them are, are heart heart attacks or something? It's a high percentage. I would say so. It's certainly more than 50%. Yeah. Well, it's all related to stress, mostly. Well, stress and breathing all that smoke and toxic fumes and stuff, yeah. 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 Unfortunately. Hey, Brian. Be safe. Am, are you, am I going to see you tomorrow? Are you sending somebody Ab- over? Absolutely. I will be there. Oh, all right. Good. I'll save some of my, my best for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't wear the headphones tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I right. promise you that won't I'll happen. I look forward to seeing you. All right, buddy. Take care. I'll buy you a cup of coffee tomorrow. All right, lo- hey, see listen. Ya. You're on. You're buying everybody a cup of coffee tomorrow. <laughs> Starbucks. Be my pleasure. See ya. We have anybody else on the phone? If no. the sheriff's a pro- I'm not sure there's any or not. We've or- got... Uh, a few law you enforcement got, personnel. Yeah, let's see if they, if they don't call in, we'll we'll do it. Okay. Do you you got military? I do, and I'm going to start out with an <clears throat> army casualty. Um, the Defense Department announced uh, supporting Operation Enduring Freedom. Sergeant First Class Force W. Robertson, 35 of Westmoreland, Kansas, died on November the third in Afghanistan. He succumbed to enemy forces attack his units with small armed fire and he was assigned to the 6th squadron 8th cavalry regiment 4th brigade combat team out of fort stewart georgia and that's the only one i have sir and okay. i think you've got a couple of <clears throat> yeah Marines. i do and I, I don't know a whole lot about them other than uh, the marine corps league submitted them and uh, two marines passed away and one of the wives so the first one was clayton swain jr uh, and the other one was Ray Krause and his wife also apparently was that an accident on yeah. some sort? Yes, so it was. It was a uh, car accident. Uh, parish in a car automobile accident. But that's all the information I have on them. Just uh, two uh, Marines passed on and one of the wives. And you got law enforcement, and if they haven't called in by now, they might be tied up with yeah, something. Yeah, probably. So. Um, I'll go ahead and read them, starting out with Robert Libke out of Oregon City Police Department, Oregon. His end of watch was Monday, November 4th, 2013. He was 41 years of age. Tour of duty was four years. He was uh, working with an emergency crew, arrived at the scene, informed the occupants was armed. Officer Lipke was one of the first officers on the scene and confronted the man at gunpoint ordered him to drop his gun. The 88-year-old subject instead opened fire with a revolver, striking Officer Lemke in the head. He is survived by his expecting wife. Also is Police Chief Stephen Fleming of Gainesville Police Department, Gainesville, Texas. 
The officer was 44 years of age, and tour of duty was 22 years, and he died from injuries sustained in a week, uh, excuse me, a accident involving a transporting to uh, a prisoner. Uh, Chief Fleming was served with the Gainesville Police Department for 22 years. He was survived by his wife and daughter. Next one is Casey Colomire of Pontiac Police Department, Illinois. His end of watch was October 30th, 2013, and his tour of duty was six years, nine months. His age was 29. He was killed while when their patrol car was struck by a drunken driver on I-55 near the 201 mile mark. Uh, he is survived by his parents. Another one is Robert Bingham, Asheville Police Department, North Carolina. His end of watch was Tuesday, October 29th. He was 37 years of age. His tour of duty was six years. He died in a vehicle crash when he plunged off the Jefferson Bowen Bridge on I-240. Um, he is survived, uh, correction, Officer Bingham was a U.S. Marine Corps veteran and he is also survived by his wife, three steps, daughters, and the parents, and six sig siblings. And that's all we have, sir. Well, that's more than enough, more than I like to hear. Yes, sir. Okay, Lara, let's go right into Amazing Grace and, and Taps. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> I thought you were going to do another digit over there. But thank you, Larry, for not doing that. I appreciate that. Hey, listen, we've got uh, got Rick here again today. You know, Rick, uh, Rick Curley with uh, the attorneys. I want to talk about a couple of things. And of course, Stevie over here, who's looking intelligent. Have you? Did you? Did you? Did you have something good happen to you yesterday? You're looking real pleased with yourself. Did you get paid or something? 
I'm trying to remember. Well, sir, he just got. You don't remember getting paid. Uh, <laughs> he, we need to talk. You know. <laughs> he just got photographed again. Oh, he's always in the. He's you in know, the, the just, Gainesville paper the other day, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah Mr. The, celebrity over here. Yeah, this one was for, was for the, was like the Florida Horse Magazine. Yeah. WFT interviewed yeah. you also. Yeah. yeah. That was last week, and then this past Tuesday was. Life is good, isn't it? It was like a couple, a couple of photographers were out there with the. With the, with the you're not doing any nude centerfolds or anything like that, are you? Hank, I hope. Hank, on the I advice of counsel, I'm yeah, going to tell Stephen not to uh, <laughs> don't answer that. comment on that. Just do the fifth. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> do the fifth. Take the fifth on that one. Yeah, <laughs> pretend you work for the federal government. Do the fifth. Yeah. Uh, it, it, Rick's fixing to pick up another vocation. He's going to start representing uh, yeah, celebrities. Celebrities. Yeah, celebs, yeah. 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 They're a manager. Exactly. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, listen, sounds good to me. At least you, got, you got uh, Cody's to talk about. We do. Other things and, Cody's and, is fantastic. They're right behind us all the way. And Cody's original roadhouse located in Ocala on Highway 200 and at the Sumter Landing in the Villages. It is more than just a steakhouse. They have fall off the bone baby back ribs. They're fantastic. So fresh fish, rotisserie chicken. They have it all. So fresh ground and half pound burgers are fantastic. And all of their steaks are hand cut. They're just plain good food. And everything is made from scratch. Cody's is where the value and the quality come together. Now they have a special with us for Veterans Day on the 11th. They're going to give you a veteran 25% discount own food and they normally give a 10 percent discount to all veterans right. just throughout the year yeah and that's not a restricted menu like a no. lot of places it's restricted that's across you know so listen go out there have a great well you're going out there because the food is good it is yeah the food is good that's the main reason to go but then in addition to that you tell them you're a veteran and and they'll give you 25 percent off on veterans day and then the rest of the time it's 10 percent off and even if you're not a veteran you need to go out there anyway and enjoy a good meal very good do you have matter of fact, I saw proof. Scott walk in. I know what happened to him. I, you know, he was intimidated by you. I think. Uh, you know, <laughs> my bike. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. motorcycle. It's, 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 your, it's your, yeah, it's your biker image. Your <laughs> Hell's yeah. Angels and all that stuff. You know. Yeah. 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 He, he needs to. Rick needs to get him into psychological testing or something for. Oh. Something. Uh, get who into psychological testing? Failing. <laughs> oh, fa oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> but they'd all fail. Failing. No, so you would blow it out of the salt. Failing yeah. would. Failing would It'll have be passed weekend. before he got involved with Harrison. <laughs> You know, you Harrison's, blow it all Harrison's kind of dro dro you know, <laughs> drove him be, over the edge. You'd be a test. Trust, trust me. You know, I would be. I set the standard for a few days. Yeah, it would be a long day, uh, two days. Hey, uh, do you have to have proof of uh, uh, or identification saying that you are a veteran when you go to Cody's? Yeah, you, otherwise you're not going to get it. Well, I think they like to see a VA card or something. You something, know, something to identify you. At, you can't even bring a photograph of yourself in a uniform, and they will accept that. Don't okay. try to wear your old uniform, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> how about, uh, it won't fit. <laughs> how about, how about uh, medals, if you, if you could bring in your medals? And I imagine if you, you got them, one supportive on your yeah, medals, I'm yeah, sure they'd, I, they'd be more than happy to give you a 10%, especially if it's a Purple Heart. <laughs> Anyway, sounds good. I got a sounds good to me. Bring them in. Yeah, okay. yeah. You yeah, got, you got, you got a couple. You got a few. Yeah. You've Bring got. Uh, you, you're still collecting money. Money's still coming in. We're glad to see that. We got do. a math. I'm going to do some banking later on today. Transfer some money around from the golf account and the fundraising account into the regular account. Outstanding. Yeah. About time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's a good. Yeah. I thought I was going to get. I told you. I thought I was going to get a call from Costa Rica from you to say if you can find me, you can have the money, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't happen, so I'm proud of you. Yeah, I, I didn't pass as a Tico down there, so they, <laughs> it won't be Costa Rica. Uh, again, we're, we're gonna, that, again we'll, we'll talk about some more tomorrow. we got a big thing tomorrow, a little awards breakfast. But <clears throat> that was just an outstanding event, and we're, so we're, I know you're probably tired of us talking about it, but I hope not because it, was a, it means a lot to the veterans we're going to be serving because of the amount of money we, were, we, we actually raised thanks to Don and all those people on the committee and Golden Ocala and all the hundreds of people that helped us out. So, And Rick, guys like Rick who spent their money to play golf. You could have saved your money, Rick, and just walked the golf course. Okay, <laughs> we, had, we had a great time. I played with Stephen here and, and Phelan and, and um, Bill Reynolds. Correct. Yeah. We had a good time. 
I talked to Bill yesterday. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so it was a, it was a great time, and then uh, you just uh, gave me a couple of more checks this morning. So money is still coming filtering in. in, and we appreciate it. We'll go to a good cause. And you know, Hank, uh, bets. I heard about Rick's golf game, and somebody wanted to give me a certificate for the bowling alley for him. Yeah. Maybe he should take up Another bowling. Another sport. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> did Another you ever, yeah. Donnie? Did I'm you? I'm telling you what I was told, not me. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I saw it. First you, you yeah. and I yeah, you and, yeah, we. It was not pretty. Was Donnie, not, did you get your tough. window fixed? <laughs> I, I, I could. He's got a whole year to, to practice and get better. <laughs> to, yeah. to this day, uh, the people, the maintenance people, can't understand why Rick and Phelan parked the the golf cart on the green. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's understandable, really. <laughs> it's you are like the mental you health like testing the, we were talking about yeah. before. <laughs> You were like the greens master or something out there. I mean, you were giving everybody barking yeah. orders, you know. Oh. Meanwhile, you're driving over everything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> say, do you have a funny. speed umber on that golf cart? Uh, it should have been. <laughs> on, on mine? Yeah. yeah, I was looking for the handbrake. To take it. <laughs> I tried to lose them twice over the bridge. <laughs> anyway, we all had a good time. And tomorrow we're doing our awards breakfast. We're going we're gonna to cut up a little bit and have a good time with that. And got some special people coming in for that. Uh, you're not getting an award, Stevie. No, don't get no, your hopes up. No pictures either. No, no photo ops, <laughs> nothing like that. No, no, no. Hey, listen, uh, one more thing, uh, and we got it filled. We already got our quota for dental care for yes. Monday. Uh, we're bringing, I don't know, 40, 50 veterans out to uh, Oak Ridge Dental Clinic on Monday, a bunch of us with us will all be veterans daily, so that's where I'll be, and Don and a whole bunch of us. No, Don's not coming. You're not coming to that, are you? No, he's not coming. He's, I, no, I'm at he, He's been sneaking someplace. Yeah, I was yes. supposed to go down to Summer yeah, Glen also. Yeah, that was you. It was yeah. supposed to have been you. Yeah, but I got to do, I got to be with the, Glen. Yeah, but you're going to be representing us. I don't well. even know how to get there, but yeah. It, it Follow the breadcrumbs. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Gonna yeah. The guys will be at the breakfast tomorrow. They'll tell you how to get. It's yeah. easy to find. Sounds like a good But we're going to be bringing, uh, we got a lot of homeless vets and needy veterans going out to Oak Ridge yes. for dental care. Monday. Yeah, so we filled the quota, so we're already I, filled up. I that sent my teeth in. Did yeah, you, you, came, you came by mail. I, I got yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With my eye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of body parts that aren't yours. Yeah. It's in the mail. It's in the mail, yeah. Well, I it's put the, the eye with the teeth to keep an eye on the teeth. Outstanding. Mm. Very good. Hey, listen, Rick's got some things he wants to talk about this morning, but, but so, so we give him enough time to do that. Um, you know, we're getting into this legal thing because things are changing all the time. We had the lady on last week from uh, that group out of Orlando. And Rick, of course, that's what they primarily deal with is veterans issues and, and benefits. But the law changes and you, you really need to stay on top of it. And there's a lot of changes coming and uh, you need to be aware of it. So Rick's going to kind of update you a little bit, talk about a few things. But we do need to take a, a brief break and uh, give you, sell you something, give you something. Are you giving it away or selling it, Larry? What are you I doing? I think we're selling it. Well, selling Larry it. needs to earn some money, you know, to pay his <coughs> bills once in a while. Oh, Larry, listen, Larry is well healed, I can tell you. <laughs> well healed. We'll be right back. <laughs> on the next Voice of Ocala, it's Pop Culture Thursday. I'll have all the latest in the goings-on from Hollywood. Plus, we'll have updates on the upcoming movies that are coming out for the holiday season. And it's Around the Water Cooler with Tom James, Buddy Martin, myself, and J.J. LaSalva as we talk today's hot topics in sport. Richie Incognito will probably be a subject of discussion. We'll do all of that on the next Voice of Ocala on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. We're streaming live at WOCA.com, the source. Looking for hand-cut steaks or just plain good food made from scratch daily? Then head over to Cody's Original Roadhouse for a fun, casual, family-friendly meal. Plus, don't miss the best happy hour with Two for One. Everything from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day, including Top Shelf. Unwind and watch your favorite college or pro team on one of our many high-def TVs. Cody's, you won't go home hungry or broke. You'll just go home happy. Cody's Original Roadhouse, where quality and value come together. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. If you're looking for work right now, you might want to brush up on your on-camera interview skills because today, 42% of first-round interviews take place over the Internet via webcam. Women are better at finding parking spaces in the first place because men tend to be less patient and drive more quickly. Food made with wheat is bad for our health. And it turns out, wheat stimulates the brain in a way that causes us to become addicted to food. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. 
You've Got a Garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener, Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Howdy folks, R.L. here. I want to tell you about the best five-buck bargain anywhere. For a limited time, Dairy Queen at Silver Springs is offering a sandwich or chicken strips, fries, a medium drink, and a sundae for only $5 till 4 p.m. And new on the menu is the Orange Julius line of real fruit smoothies, including protein smoothies. Our fresh made garden salads go great with a fruit smoothie. Dairy Queen, Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. All right, 25 minutes after 9 o'clock, let's return to Veterans News. Hank Whittier. Hey, Scott just dropped by from Cody's, and just uh, we're, we're supposed to all get together today, but just I got uh, the bottom dropped out again. So I keep on thinking next week and this week will be better than the previous week. <laughs> and it, 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 at this sure. time of year, it doesn't happen. Quite honestly, for the rest of the year, you're going to be busy. Well, you know, I was talking to Carla from Interfaith, and she was a saying, saying the same thing. It's like a tidal wave just kind of yeah. overwhelms you from about... The first uh, first of uh, October on, right. and just a lot on the plate, a lot of things to do, a lot of with people. With the golf to, tournament, and you're involved. Well, just everything else. I, you know, we got a lot of uh, the, the situation changes because so many yeah. transients are around and uh, folks in need, and you and more people are aware of the folks in need, so they call about them. Yes, uh, and so it's a busy a time of year. So, but anyway, we're going to try to do it next week. Uh, I've been um, promising that for a while. Can't and find soon. Phelan. I don't know where he no, went Phelan, off to. Phelan. He he went off somewhere. Phelan went to church. yeah church. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's a deacon. Yeah, he oh. had to say a prayer, you know, for I mean. yeah for Don here. And let God God forgive God forgive, God forgive Don Harrison. You know. <laughs> Somebody needs to do it for yeah. Don. You got. Let, let's talk a little bit more about Cody's because they got a lot of specials Not going a problem. on. And uh, listen, you need a really. It's a great place to have something to eat and have something to drink if that's your pleasure, or you yeah. you can get soft drinks as well. They yeah. got pasta. They got everything over. Yeah, they got. Yeah, they got a lot of. Yeah, they yeah. got salads and pastas, and, yeah. and of course they're, they're you know they're big on steaks and all that stuff. When you get when's your check come in? When's your retirement check come in? <laughs> well, I don't get them anymore. Yeah, yeah. I saw direct deposit. I, Linda will tell me. <laughs> she will tell me when That's it's coming. The problem. She <laughs> would. Yeah, because you're buying dinner for Linda and I. You're not coming. I don't have a wallet. <laughs> Lost it. Mine's That's all right. We got your plastic card now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Cody's has got. We know they got the special for veterans on Veterans Day. Twenty five percent off. They do. Twenty five percent. And they normally give a veteran 10%, but uh, you always have to show them your card and uh, uh, let them know that you are a veteran to receive he, that uh, you got to speak slower to him, so he's trying to figure this out now. <laughs> what really yeah, yeah. I yeah. only have 10 fingers. Yeah. Sorry, you got toes. You can count toes. Actually, yeah, let's left. try this again. Say, normally, Dawn, it's 10% off. I thought it was 15 no. no. 10% <laughs> off every other time for a veteran. You keep banging But on me. Veterans Day. 25%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. And they do serve pasta. You got anything, yeah, anything you want, they got at Cody's. Any, listen, if you want good food, they're at Cody's. That's all you got to remember. Yeah, and they got fantastic <laughs> And Scott's steaks. there, too. You might even have dinner with Scott. I don't know. He's there all the time. I don't know. You got to really convince Scott to have that dinner. That will cost you me. extra, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. But, uh, they were hand cut steaks and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And they are open at 11 o'clock in the mornings, and they got the happy hour that lasts until 7 p.m. And uh, it's long hour. Long hour. Well, I know the time we went down, we went down to uh, the one in the villages, had a great time, yeah. really had a good time. That's probably because some people, the brick and, and, and this one didn't show up. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Aren't they having a time? Tough day. They're doing, they're doing something. 
right here in O'Keller, aren't they? Yeah, they always, they, you know, really, they really are good, good neighbors because they, they, they hook up with a lot of uh, a lot of groups to help them out and do these. As a matter of fact, they offered to do it for us again, but we've got just so much on the plate. We'll do it again, but we just can't do it during this time. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I saw something. It made Toys for Tots, I think. Yeah. Toys for Tots. It, it, yes, it is. I think they're hooked up with Toys for Tots. Yeah. Um, so they're good. You know, they're good people. They're, they're, you know, the food is good. The restaurant's good. The service is good. But, but you know, in addition to that, they're, again, good people to deal with. Most of the folks that we end up talking about, are, you know, become friends of ours. And um, it's nice to talk about good saying good things about our friends. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's why that's Thanks, why I Bob. don't say yeah. yeah there's a few people we don't talk about Don <laughs> Thanks yeah. Robert <laughs> yeah. All right um, I know there's anybody got any announcements before Rick gets in and wants to talk any last minute things you want to talk about no, I just I just like to thank everybody that helped us uh, yeah echo yeah. what you've said and uh, yeah I, I've got a I, I got a letter going to the editor too kind of on the same theme so uh, hopefully they'll print it. Yeah, uh, you, I, and I got the pictures for you. Good. I got some yeah. other the pictures. The Vegas pictures. The Las uh, Vegas pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that Nothing Tahoe. Stayed there. Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing stay. Listen, anybody that tells you that things stay in Vegas is lying to you. Lying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Depends on, you know, a good attorney would know that. Rick. <laughs> take the fifth myself i think <laughs> hey rick you got i know did you have something else Robert? yeah i do and and this really came to me larry handed it to me and it's very appreciative but toys for tots celebrates the 10th anniversaries with toys are us okay uh, they've been as a major supporter for the marine corps league toys for tots and uh, lieutenant general pete osmond USMC retired, uh, president executive officer of the Marine Corps uh, Toys for Tots Foundation. He's very much in favor of it and wants everybody to participate as if possible. And we are trying to get some families together to call the Toys for Tots for their kids that need the toys. Yeah, because you know, we're not into the toy thing ourselves. No. We do other things, and um, but the toys, they, you know, this time of year, they really need to hook up with Toys for Tots. And I know they work with the schools, and they work with Suzanne McGuire and all that yeah. group, which are, which are good people and know what they're doing. All right, that's it. Got got more. One other, one got other one thing. More. Okay. Larry's just a fantastic <laughs> supplier of information. He never gives me a thing. I've been doing this for eight <laughs> years. He has yet to give me a piece of paper to help me out. <laughs> never. Well, other, he's done it good yeah. to me. But it's King, Other than show me where the exit is. It'll be a summons. <laughs> King of the Sun concert band, uh, Les Muncaster, conductor, presents Veterans Light the stars sunday november the 10th 2013 at 6 30 p.m the ocala marion county veterans memorial park at 2601 southeast fort king the admission is no charge yeah if you haven't heard les's group you're missing something he is outstanding a lot of that group are veterans themselves and they just they're, they're really very very professional yeah, very professional. Very professional. Yeah. And they're taking over the uh, old auditorium down there by Tuscawilla. A uh, different group. Yeah. No, no, that's the symphony orchestra. Oh, that's the symphony yeah, yeah, orchestra. Right. We, we, we were just yeah. we just met with them. <laughs> you were close. Yeah, you had I the. Know. They do play music. Hey, Kingdom of the Sun band, concert band. No, we just had. Yeah, we just I met. That. Yeah, yeah. We don't know much, but we knew that. That's good. Yeah, we met with Matt the other day. You know, with the symphony orchestra, and they were talking about that, and that's a great fundraiser too. Matt, we may have Matt on to talk about that a little bit because he's a big supporter of veterans as well. But that's that group, and the okay. and they've got a fundraiser going on too. To secure all the funds it's going to need to fix that building so and it's Good. and it's going to be impressive yeah. very too. very impressive, impressive from what i saw anyway listen rick's here he came all the way over from citrus county this morning and uh we appreciate that rick always working with veterans always trying to inform us about what's going on and what we need to be doing so i didn't ask him exactly what he wants to talk about but he's always something informative so rick uh, welcome aboard as usual buddy well thanks hank uh we really appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and visit with you all and uh, share some insights into what's going on with the VA, uh, as well as to um, stress the basics. Uh, today I brought in the two Bibles that uh, we live by. I don't know if you can see that on the simulcast. They're but four inches thick at least. Yeah, about uh, over 2,000 pages. Oh, wow. Each. And uh, that is a sense, in, in essence what uh, the VA expects uh, everyone, including the vet who's filing their own claim, to be able to 
walk through in order to have their claim. Uh, well, the fun part about that with the 2,000 pages, it says <laughs> paragraph 5, 3C, go back and look at paragraph 10, A, B. Then if you get that, you have to go to paragraph 89, X. And you, you can't figure it out. It's just too hard. <laughs> Well, I'm fortunate because I have a uh, very good law partner in David Corey who, uh, he's got these page numbers down like that. I mean, he's unbelievable. You know, so, they reference each other and you've just got to figure yep. it out. How well, do you do that? You can get through there. But, you know, the, uh, I, Hank, I, I often talk about the importance of meeting deadlines. And um, over and over again, I'm running into situations where I get a, a cold call from a vet and they tell me about a letter that they have just received from the VA. Uh, and I ask them to read me the letter, and, they, and there's a reference to a deadline in the letter. I said, well, what's the deadline? Well, it says 30 days, but then it says 60 days. Then it says 12 months. And I said, well, when did you get the letter? Well, I got it three weeks ago. <laughs> so now I'm thinking in 30 days, three weeks ago, he's got seven days. So David and I try to uh, hustle over to the vet right away and, and read that letter because... Um, you know, we're, we're forced to fill something out on the spot, go right down to the post office and mail it in. So it's really important that these vets, uh, and I can't emphasize it enough, and I hope you continue to do it on the show when I'm not here, to, to uh, open the mail, look at your deadlines, uh, note them. If you have a representative or a lawyer, uh, make sure you tell them, because if you don't, and these deadlines uh, go by the wayside, for instance, this one I'm talking about, uh, if he doesn't file it by uh, November 16th, it was a 30-day, uh, he's going to automatically be reduced from 100% down to 50 on his PTSD while they do the claim. But they've already made a determination that they're going to reduce him. However, if, if he files prior to the November 16th date, then they'll preserve the 100% pending the outcome of the uh, litigation. So, you know, it means a lot to these guys and, and gals out there. So. Um, that's one point I wanted to, to uh, address, and I don't know if any, Don, if you have any comments on that. The only comments I have is, how do they assess it? Is it objectively or subjectively? It's very subjectively because, as you, as I have seen in in the two Bibles in front of me, there's a lot of language, and there the language can be, like I just said, very subjective in terms of how you look at it, how you look at the words. PTSD, for instance, you, you talk about un, unemployability and, and then also unsociable. Hmm. Well, what's unsociable? Then they define it friends you and family. Me, my best friend. I mean, you know, so, you know, you have one set of eyes looking at it, then you have another set of eyes looking at it. And that kind of leads me to my other point uh, about getting a second opinion. Uh, so often, uh, veterans come to us and they've let the NOD expired notice of disagreement time you have 12 months to file an, an, an NOD to preserve your initial claim and they let go they were told by somebody you don't have a claim they were told by the VA you don't have a claim they might go to somebody and they tell them well you don't have a claim um, and then they just let the ball drop then someone tells them like Hank might say well you know you I think you do have a claim you should go talk to Mr. Corey or Mr. Hurley now we pick up the case the deadline has expired, so we've got to start fresh over again. Um, but if, if the veteran is aware that, you know, if you have cancer and a doctor tells you, well, we're going to cut your arm off, aren't you maybe going to go to another doctor and see if that other doctor says, well, maybe we're not going to cut your arm off? Well, there's, it's no different dealing with the VA. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've got to go out and get that second opinion because subjectively, we may find a better way of connecting the dots uh, than the first person who gave the opinion. And how much time did that first person spend with you? Uh, I know, you know, David and I spent countless hours with our clients, and I've been he I've heard through the vets that other representatives don't necessarily do that. Yeah. And uh, I'm not here to to be, to be negative, I'm just saying that the, uh, the, the veteran deserves the time that the representative, whether it's a VSO or an attorney, is going to spend with that veteran. Don't, you know, don't ever shortcut them and get them out of the office. It's not just a form. Mm -hmm. That form is evidence. 
and that form has to be looked at, and you can, you can add attachments to it. You know, it might be a DBQ, you know, disability questionnaire form, which, which you can now submit. You can take that form to your, your, your medical provider. It might be a private person, it might be an expert witness, and they can fill that out for you. And then that can be submitted as well as an attachment to the form. So there's so many things that need to be done when you're processing these, these uh, claims. And, and from a veteran's perspective, uh, here's another one, Rick. Uh, your pain threshold, uh, your pain level, is it one to 10? Is it seven, nine, 10? You know, I mean, how do you figure that out? Uh, uh, the pain hurts. Well, most of us that have been through the, the military, we all have pains somewhere. And, and how do you, I don't know how to put it on a level of eight, nine, or 10. 10, I guess you're ready to commit suicide or something? Or, or is it just that you can't get up or you can't operate, uh, function or something? That, that, that's a, a very good uh, point and observation because I, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll ask my, my clients, you know, what is your pain level today? And uh, they just look at me and say, well, 10? Yeah. One? I what, mean, do you, you, what do you want to hear? Yeah, what do you want to <laughs> yeah. hear? You know, and, right. and the, the scary thing is if they go into a VA uh, exam, um, and it might be a CMP exam, mm -hmm. compensation pension exam, and the doctor says, well, what is your pain threshold today? Well, often the, the veteran will, in addition to using the words fine, doing better, which, you know, uh, it's amazing, but they don't know what to say, and, and they don't want to say 10, so they'll say 5. Well, that gets reported now yeah. on the medical documents. Well, he was only a 5. I know I was my, my father's primary care person when he was uh, dying of cancer, and um, every day we would ask him, and hospice would ask him, you know, what's your pain level? And he just threw out 7 every day. Yeah. yeah I mean, he just, you know. No he, significance. No, yeah. he'd, he'd look at me and say, Rick. I'd say, Dad, how'd you, how do you get to seven? He goes, I'm tired of hearing the question. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, well, so I throw out seven, I, you know. So what's the significant difference between a seven and an eight? It's all subjective. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what confuses us, you know. You well, it's subjective in, in who's hearing it. You know, they're hearing it, but it, again, they're going to put it down. It, you know, and I think the other thing is a lot of the vets think some of these questions are innocent questions, mm -hmm. and they're not. Oh. Someone's recording what you're saying, and I, I've had a lot of them come in, and you know, just like I think Rick kind of alluded to it, didn't get into it very much, but, hey, how are you doing today? And the veteran will say, I'm doing pretty good. Well, you, the, no. that's and, be, and you're talking to someone who's recording what you're saying to them. And that's going to be forwarded, and then down the road, when you're saying for a claim, they're going to say, "Well, you have said you were doing fine," and that's not really the case. A lot, you know, it's just they're not asking you on a social basis; they're asking right. you from a medical point of view how you're yeah. doing. Yeah, there, there's a lot of you know. Rick talked about, and and I, I don't know what possesses people either, but they get correspondence back from the VA, and they answer it rather <laughs> yeah, than going me. back to their attorney or going to their service officer. That, those folks need to know what you're talking. They don't need you to answer that. You don't need to be corresponding back to the VA on your own. That's why you got a service officer, or, and that's why you got your attorney. That's you know, why let, I ran, let them know what's going on. That's why I ran down to your office the other day. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's too complicated now today. It is. Uh, when you start talking about hey, what's wrong with you. Uh, when I had uh, diagnosed with stage three colon cancer, the doctor says, you didn't feel this? And I said, no, I didn't. Because you know why, doc? My, everything hurts me. My back, my shoulders, mm -hmm. my hands. I got hit in the head. I said, all that stuff hurts. So when I wake up, uh, I, I hurt anyway. And he goes, well, you had stage three colon cancer. When they operated on me, they said you would not have lasted another week. <coughs> and he goes, and you never felt that. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't mm -hmm. think, you know, put it in perspective. You have so many things hurting you. How do you go and say, hey, I'm in pain nine, pain 10. Mm -hmm. My hands are pain three today, but my head's a pain 10. And my, so do we average it out and say I'm a seven? I don't know, Rick. We were you talking know, about that the, the other day. You were, I picked you up at the at the pain center. Mm, yeah. And we were talking about that. Hey, you know, this is not this is a bad day, but it's not as bad as yesterday. Right. And you get so many other things that hurt. 
and, and you know, you, but again, you're talking to people who, who will, you know, I'm not sh sure that they're always, you know, particularly the VA, really are anxious to help you out in that regard. Yeah. So you, you, one is, I don't think you need to be doing claims yourself. That's I, my opinion. I agree. I agree. But a lot of vets try it, and I, I it's agree. a huge, huge mistake. You, you know, you, you need, you need to hook up with a service officer. The county's got them. We have them. The VFW has them, the American Legion has them, and then, in, you know, and sometimes you need an attorney because the case is that complicated or that involved that you need an attorney like Rick and his partner to say, hey, listen, this case is, you know, is really complex and uh, you didn't do the right things to begin with. Chances are you try to do it yourself and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how many, how many vets are turned down because they did it themselves, but the numbers really increase if you try to do it yourself. You uh, need assistance in doing it. You don't sure you think do. that you sure some do. of the veterans do this, uh, try to fill it out themselves because they're afraid they're going to get charged? Well, I think that's part forms. of it. Part of it is, again, they think that they're sending, I think they think they're sending material to people who really want to solve the problem for them, and they don't. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but that's just not that's just not the way it's set up. I'm, that's my opinion. I've seen thousands of them over the years. So, and then you get into the complex cases, you better get yourself an attorney. Yep. You really better get an attorney. Uh, there's lots of them out there. We have, we know Rick and his partner. We know them. And matter of fact, your partner's a, a veteran too. Isn't he a he Navy vet? Uh, yeah. uh, Air Force. Air Force vet. He was in JAG. Yeah. So, you know, go to people and know what the hell they're doing. They do it all the time. And here's a, here's another issue. Uh, Hank, you probably can, and most of us here can identify with this. So you go to the doctors, and the very first thing they want to do with you is give you pills. And you know, and if you have a job, you want to keep the job, and you don't want to take pills that might distract from your ability to concentrate or stay awake. So you get pain pills, you get headache pills, you get back pills. So a lot of veterans, like myself, won't take it because I, I, you got to be alert. You got to be able to do things. But again, you suck up the pain. And so it's a hard thing for veterans to go in and say, "Hey, look at, uh, I got pain," and they give you these pills and they count them. See, a month later, you should be out, mm -hmm. and then you're not out. You're not asking them. They know immediately that you're not taking them. So it, then it, it goes against you. If you were really in pain, you would have already asked for your refill. So that, that's another thing that when you're talking to vet, veterans, the mindset is, especially the way they train the, the ground pounders or the, the, the infantry, the artillery, hey, suck it up. It's like pro football issue that we're hearing today. Hey, that's the, that's the manly thing. You've got a little pain, so what? It's a boo-boo. Just mm -hmm. keep moving. And, and, and it stays with you after you get out of the service. You're not going to go whining. Because the, fir the first thing my friends would say, Hank would say to me, uh, what are you, a little baby? I thought you were a Marine. Yeah, a little bit more graphic than that. <laughs> are you a mouse? <laughs> yeah. oh, are you a mouse? <laughs> when, I, when I interview uh, vets, it might be the initial interview. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I can tell pretty much if there's a PTSD issue. And um, so we start talking about uh, their years serving mm. if it's infantry or in the air force um, and their wife might be sitting there or a family member and all of a sudden uh, they start getting into their years of service and pretty graphic details about what they did in iraq or afghanistan it's not what the average person goes through right you know and this is why you have to take care of these uh, men and women because they deserve it and I'll look over at uh, maybe a, fa a family member, and they're just shaking their head. And I'll, I'm conscious of the fact that I'll look at her or him and say, you never heard this before, have you? Been married to him for 12, 15 years. You never heard any of this, have you? And she would say, no. He's never, ever talked about this. Uh, imagine having to keep all that sucked up inside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and never telling, a, going to the VA and not telling them. Because what you said, Don, does that make them look bad, like a wimp, that they're going to now all of a sudden start talking about their, their service of duty? Or is it going to be documented and you might lose your job because you're in a position of authority or responsibility, and if they see any uh, black marks on you about psychological issues, they can, they can remove you, um, put you in a lower position or a less authority. Yeah. So if you want to keep moving up, it's a, it's a difficult balance. 
I'll, I'll use the intelligence community. When I first started working there, if you had an issue, the very first thing they do is take your badge away. If they take your credentials away from you, you can't do your job. So therefore, you're a candidate to be laid off or removed from the community. So if you start talking about, I have, now imagine an intelligence officer start talking about I have headaches and I'm thinking I, I, I nightmares, which I never knew what a nightmare was until this past year. Uh, uh, but you start talking like that, they take your, your credentials away from you because there may be something wrong, uh, something stirring up inside you that they, they don't want to put you, uh, subject you to that environment. So you got to protect yourself. So people go in with those mindsets. I, mindsets. I don't want to be relieved from my job. Not just me. Any veteran, a, a truck driver. You tell your, you tell your your physician or your nurse at the office that you're having problems. What are they going to do to you? They're not going to let you drive. They're going to say you you may not be stable enough. Yeah. So you know people got to think that way too. So they don't. They're not totally open with everybody. No, yeah, that's a good point because that 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 does happen. I've seen it happen, and like if you start, and again, I think a lot of it's the culture you're coming from. Yeah. You know, like just like we Rick, we're talking about, the people don't want to share that. They never share. They never share with anybody else. Yeah. Again, it's the it's that old. It's in, ingrained into you about it's a sign of weakness type stuff. At least it is in some of the services. Well, we see it with the football, the NFL. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Rick. Uh, any big changes coming up in the in the VA evaluation of uh, pensions and you know uh, claims and and stuff like that or anything happening that on the horizon that we need one, to be aware one thing of? I, I want to discuss, uh, there's a program, uh, and it's been, it's not new, it's been in, around for a couple of years, it's called the Fully Developed Claims Program. And this essentially is a program where your representative, whether it's a VSO, an attorney, and the veteran tells the VA, we're going to fully develop our claim for you, for the VA. And in return, you're going to give us a quick decision or quicker than the normal process. Uh, the benefit, obviously, is the quick decision, you know. Um, the problem is, is that it is a new program. There's not enough case law out there right now to see exactly the ramifications uh, of this program. And uh, so it's still, still in the work, work so to speak. Um, the other issue is, is, you know, after you, and there's all sort of certifications you need to sign that you're, you know, I don't know if you're necessarily waving off a, a future appeal. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's kind of dodgy there. Um, but the bottom line is, is that um, it's a great way to get the claim heard, but don't think for one second that there might be uh, ramifications down the road in the appeal effort. They, the, the, the VA may come back and say, we'll, we'll give you 40. <clears throat> okay, well, have you waived your right to appeal? Probably not. I would say no. But again, dealing with 4,000 pages of, of VA regulations, you have to be very careful. Uh, so while uh, David and I endorse the program, uh, we endorse it with the um, caveat that make sure that you do it with a rep, whether it's a VSO or an attorney, don't do it on your own. Mm. Because when they say fully developed claim, they mean fully developed. And you are basically telling the VA, you don't need to do what you would normally do to help me develop my claim. You are saying, I'm going to do it. And in return, you're going to give me a quick decision. Dangerous. Well, and by a quick decision, they're talking about what? Uh, six months, a year? What are they talking about? Well, the, again, there's no specific date uh, in terms of time, uh, but it would be quicker than the normal 18 months, two years that we see these days. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, w and one thing I wanted to add on to Don back earlier, and never judge one vet's case against another vet's case. I've met 100% rated vets, and I've met 40% rated vet, 40% rated vets, and I've met vets who've been denied, and they're at zero. It might be service connected, but they're still at zero because it doesn't fall within the guidelines of the, of the Bible. Um, so don't ever look at one vet and say, well, you know, he's got 100%. Why don't I have 
Maybe he didn't have a good VSO. Maybe he didn't have a good attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is, is in order for a claim to be uh, heard properly, it must be fully developed. And whether that's in the uh, EASY program, it's 526 EASY, that's the form, uh, or it's the normal routine, you still need to fully develop that claim. That means the medical evidence needs to be the, a strong nexus between the medical evidence and the injury that was incurred by the uh, veteran. Yeah, and how they articulate it. Uh, Rick, yeah. could you uh, hold on? We got a, a phone call that's come in that wants to talk to you, please. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. Uh, is, this is Stephen, uh, U.S. Army retired. Is that Mr. Rick Hurley? Hey, Stephen. Uh, I just want um, Ocala to know that um, Mr. Hurley is um, a godsend. You know, he, um, he came on the radio and I got his number and he's working with me and uh, he's on the ball you know he's helping me to uh, you know achieve certain things and um and i just encourage all the vets to you know give this man a call and see what he can do for them okay i'd like to hear that That's listen you know you made the good point and you need you know veterans shouldn't try to tackle the va or any other government agency by themselves no you need help you do right. need help i appreciate that guy Thank sure. you, Stephen. Right, thanks, Thank Steve. You. Hey, listen, uh, before you go, though, we're almost out of time. I, I, you know, folks do need to know how to get a hold of you. And uh, I, you, you come on often, and I, and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, you know, you, you come on in your own time, and we that's uh, getting the information out to vets. But how, how do I, you know, veterans, he obviously heard you and, and got a hold of you. Uh, how do we do that? Well, you can reach uh, Corey and Hurley Law Group uh, a couple of ways. Uh, my phone number is 727-612-612. 1515. Uh, my law partner, David Corey, C O R Y, he's at 813 662 0760 or his cell at 813 719 5632, and he's in our Brandon, Tampa office. Uh, you can also go online at, David, uh, at Corey and Hurley Law Group.com. We've got a lot of great information on the website for the veteran. Uh, as ways, as, as well as ways of getting in touch with us. Rick, I, I want to make a, one last uh, point. I know a lot of veterans, they, they get 0% for, for whatever ailment they have. Zero is not necessarily bad because the Veterans Administration recognizes that you have that, but they say the severity uh, the disability isn't quite qualifying you for uh, a compensation yet. So zero can be addressed again in the future. Well, and, and that's a good point, because what they're recognizing is that you have a service-connected injury. Mm -hmm. The rating is only at zero because you don't fall within the guidelines of our Bible here. Uh, but they've, they've, they've given up the idea that you are, are not service-connected. So they're saying that's you're service-connected, now go out, get the medical evidence to get you rated above zero. Yes, so don't quit on it. No, no, well, and his point too, you know, a lot of them have gone to folks who supposedly know what they're doing, service officers, and that's not always, I have to tell you, it's not always the case. So, I agree. you know, uh, see, sometimes you do need that second opinion. If it were me and I was a, you know, had a claim when someone said, hey, you know, it didn't happen, you know, maybe maybe they didn't prepare it correctly. There's a lot of issues there that you need to maybe get a second opinion. I would if I were in that position. Rick, maybe, you know, uh, we've got some folks coming on the next couple of weeks. Maybe the next time you come back, we can talk about some of those con conditions that are, are presumed, particularly the, the, the non-vets, and uh, kind of address some of those. There are a lot of them out there, and I know they're growing all the time. And a lot of folks I come into my office and you know, they start talking about what's going on with them, and I'm going, well, you know, are you aware that what you have is one of the conditions that um, being exposed to Agent Orange and other things, big one, Agent Orange. Uh, you know, uh, might have led to that, and they didn't know anything about it. No one ever told them. They know, you know, they just, you know, they went about their business, went to work, and now here they are 30, 40 years later, ill, and it's a condition that may very well have been related to the service. So maybe we can talk about next time and, and be specific be about great. it. You know, that's a great question, uh, a point. Agent Orange, I, if we have the time, i got to ask you this. They, at one time they mentioned it may not affect you, but it may uh, affect your offspring. Mm -hmm. 
Is that still valid? Uh, I mean, could that possibly be true? Well, just because you have Agent Orange. I've been exposed to or it. Or you've been yeah. exposed to it. Uh, doesn't mean you have a claim. Right. You, Don, you and I have yeah, talked about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, and you uh, know that mess up in Lejeune. I right. mean, that, that's how it started off. It started off with some Marines who were on active duty actually looking into it because their children were ill. Right. Um, the leukemia rate, leukemia rate out of you know. Camp Lejeune is uh, uh, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Yeah. So, you know, he's right. It's again, it's a complex issue, and it's very. But but there are, and you need to be aware of that information. At least, listen. If your kids are sick, I, I have a, I have a child that had some illnesses, and you wonder, hey, what, you know, what yeah. I what I was exposed to, maybe it, it I didn't wasn't affected. Did it affect my children? Right. And a lot of veterans are out there like that. That certainly is the case in Lejeune. So, hey, Rick, I appreciate you coming on, buddy, as usual. Thank you. And uh, we got to shove off a lot of things to do this morning. I appreciate you turning, tuning in, and thanks for Cody's and all the good folks that help us out there and all the good folks that help vets, helping vets to help other veterans out. We appreciate that. And uh, thank you for your service, and God bless America, everybody. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. Trans fats may soon be declared unsafe. The FDA wants to remove partially hydrogenated oils often found in gooey...